living word in me, mighty one and king of kings, Jesus. And it's your name we're shouting out, shouting out loud. It's your name we're shouting out, shouting out loud. It's your name we're shouting out, shouting out loud. It's your name we're shouting out, shouting out loud. And it's your name. Welcome to Tri Church Worship. This is the eighth Sunday after Pentecost. We gather as a people of God. We gather across the miles in our homes, but we gather in the Holy Spirit as one body, unified in God's love and grace. And so as we gather, let us take a deep breath. Fill us, Holy Spirit. Awaken us to your presence. And we breathe again. Fill us, Holy Spirit. Awaken us to your presence. As we gather, we're mindful that our creator, redeemer, and sustainer is right here with us. And so once again, we breathe deep. Fill us, Holy Spirit. Awaken us to your presence. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin. Reconciling God, we, we confess, confess that, that we, we do, do not trust your abundance, abundance and we deny your presence in our lives. We, we place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We, we fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us. And in your spirit, lead us, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace of God through Jesus Christ through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us live now in hope, for hope does not disappoint because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Oh, 
is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness, morning by morning new mercies I see, all I have needed thy hand hath provided, great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Summer and winter and springtime and harvest, sun, moon, and stars in their courses above, join with all nature in manifold witness to thy great faithfulness, mercy, and The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit is with you always. Let us pray. Thank you for this day that you have made. We come to worship you today. Awaken us to your presence, love, and grace. Mold us into a people who welcome your word and serve one another. Come. Holy Spirit. Amen. Please join in a responsive reading of Psalm 119, verses 129 through 136. Your decrees are wonderful, therefore I obey them with all my heart. When your word is opened, it gives light. It gives understanding to the simple. I open my mouth and pant because I long for your commandments. Turn to me and be gracious to me, as you always do to those who love your name. Order my footsteps in your word. Let no iniquity have dominion over me. Rescue me from those who oppress me, and I will keep your commandments. Let your face shine upon your servant, and teach me your statutes. My eyes shed streams of tears because people do not keep your teachings. A reading of Romans 8, verses 26 through 39. The Spirit helps us in our weakness. For we do not know how to pray as we ought, but that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. We know that all things work together for good for those who love God, who are called according to His purpose. For those whom God foreknew, He also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, in order that he might be the firstborn within a large family. And those whom God predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? God, who did not withhold his own son, but gave him up for all of us. Will God not with him also give us everything else? Who will bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? 
It is Christ Jesus who died, yes, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are being killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through Christ who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Word of God, Word of Life. Thanks be to God. Halle, halle, halle. for today is from Matthew chapter 13. Jesus continued, the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field, which someone found and hid. Then in his joy, he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. On finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and caught fish of every kind. When it was full, they drew it ashore, sat down and put the good into baskets, but threw out the bad. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the furnace of fire where there is weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all this? They answered, yes. And Jesus said to them, therefore, every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like the master of a household who brings out of his treasure what is new and what is old. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In our gospel text today, Jesus shares three parables. A parable is a story that teaches. And I wonder perhaps what Jesus could have been trying to teach in the first one. For in the first parable, a person is walking apparently, and finds a treasure hidden in a field, they bury it again, go sell everything they have, and then go and buy the field that has now this treasure that was there all along and has been rehidden. Now, it seems a little sketchy to me that you would find a treasure on someone else's property rehide it on their property and then go and buy it from them without ever telling them it's there. It seems wrong and strange. And I wonder perhaps what Jesus is trying to let us know. I don't think it's to do that. But perhaps the message is when you stumble upon something that is worth everything, it changes your life. 
It's worth letting go of everything else in order to attain it. Perhaps in the second parable, the one with the merchant out searching for the finest pearl. He's searching and searching and finds this pearl of great price and goes and sells all that he has and buys it. Again, he finds something of greater value than anything else and he lets go of all that he needs to in order to have that one thing. Perhaps, perhaps the main teaching from these two parables is that when we find something that's worth everything, our lives change. We make different choices. Perhaps there are other meanings too. I welcome you to continue to wrestle with this text. For there is tension in the scriptures. There is mystery. And I wonder what God is sharing with you today about our first two parables. And now to the third parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a net thrown into the sea that catches every kind of fish. After the fish are caught, they're sorted. The good in one spot, the other in another spot. The righteous separated from those who are unrighteous. Hmm. Now, I have never really been a fisherwoman. When I was little, we would go to Prairie Winkle Park with our stick and string and bobbin and attempt to fish. And it was great fun. But truly, I have no idea what it's like to fish. And so I called some of our resident fisher people. I spent some time speaking with Rick and Bonnie and Mark. And I asked them what it's like to fish on the Rock River, what we might find there. And they taught me about walleye and carp and crappie and bluegill and northern pike and many more. They taught me about catfish. And they also mentioned that sometimes when you're fishing, you catch things that aren't fish, like rocks and trash and a purse and a bicycle. When you're fishing with a pole or with a net, you still get what you get and you have to discern if it's good or bad, if it's worthy of eating or letting go. The more tasty fish and the less tasty fish grow up together in the river. So too in our lives, we grow up together, the righteous and the unrighteous, the good and the bad. Any scripture that talks about the righteous and the unrighteous, the good and the bad, often leads to humanity trying to figure out who's good and who's bad, who's righteous and who's unrighteous, who's in and who's out. This is not our place. Our job is to remember that our only righteousness comes from God. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. This is not your own doing. It is the gift of God from Ephesians 2.8. Our job is to remember what it says in our reading from Romans today, that nothing, nothing can separate you from the love of God through Christ Jesus our Lord. So as we're all swimming around in life and swept up in the net, will we be found righteous only by grace through faith, only because of God's activity, only because nothing can separate us from God's love through Jesus. And so humanity, we have this abounding love of God, this abounding grace of God that ushers us into life, a life 
of remembering that our lives are about more than what we want, that we are to love God and to love our neighbor as ourselves. Can we love our neighbor if we don't love ourselves? No. God loves you as you are, not as you wish you were or anyone tells you that you should be, but as you are right now. May this love fuel you to be kind and compassionate to yourself and to others, to refrain from designating someone as good and someone as bad, someone as righteous and someone as not, and instead lean in to God's love and grace and ask God to give you God's eyes to see those around you that you would see in the image of every human being the likeness of God in the least of these and in the greatest, for all are created in God's image and all are designed to be in a love relationship with God and others. And so as we swim through life, as we're gathered together, we grow up the weeds and the wheat. We grow up the tasty fish and the not tasty fish. We grow up the good and the bad. And the reality is, if we're left to our own devices, apart from God, we are a sinful people. We do not love God with all that we are every minute of every day. We do not love our neighbors as ourselves every minute of every day. We sin, and it creates brokenness in our families, in our relationships, in our congregations and communities, in our nation, and in the world. We sin. We are not always good to each other, to God, or to ourselves. And the only way through for us, the only path for us is one of God's love and grace and the kind of love and grace that can shape and reshape us that we would be continually transformed into the likeness of Jesus, that we would strive to love as Jesus loves, that we would soak up the abounding love of God so deeply that it would permeate who we are and how we treat others that we would live in the love and grace that God has for us. For God makes us righteous, for it is by grace you have been saved through faith. This is not your own doing, it is the gift of God. For nothing can separate you from the love of God through Christ Jesus our Lord. Do we sit back in God's love and grace? Do we say, well, we have eternal life with Christ through Jesus, who cares what happens here on earth? I say to you, no. Let us be a people transformed by God's love and grace that reaches out to others, that chooses to work for justice and equity for all, that chooses to think of others, to love God, to love our neighbors as ourselves, to live, give, and serve as best we are able. We're all fish in the sea, and we're only righteous through Jesus. We're only forgiven and made new through Jesus. How will Jesus' love and grace, how will the righteousness that you're gifted through Christ change your life this week? How will it change your life this month and year? Are there opportunities, spaces and places where you could be welcoming God's love and grace ever deeper into who you are? and allowing it to eke out in how you live. Perhaps this could look like greater patience when driving or refraining from saying a snarky comment, refraining from tearing others down with your words. Perhaps this looks like writing a letter to a friend or stranger or donating where you are able. 
Perhaps it looks like praying for others, thinking about what others need and doing what you can to assist. I don't know what it's gonna look like for you, but I challenge you and welcome you to take this righteousness that God freely gives you through Jesus, to take God's love and grace and allow it to do something in your life. For your life is full of purpose. There is work to be done. There are people who need love and need service. And at the heart of who we are, at the heart of all of us, we need that same love and service. May God grow us as God's people, that we would truly welcome all that God does, allow it to become an ever deepening part of who we are, and in turn, share it with others. Let us pray. Oh God, at times we take your love and grace, the righteousness you give us for granted. We squander it. We go on sinning, knowing that grace abounds, loves abounds, knowing that your righteousness covers over us. Forgive us, oh God, and turn us back to you, that we would live full, abundant lives in you. Certain that nothing separates us from your love, certain that we are saved by grace and empowered to live righteously, to love you and to love others. Help us, oh God. Turn our eyes and lives to you. In Jesus' name, amen.
of your care and helped by the Holy Spirit, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Merciful God, your reign is revealed to us in common things, a mustard shrub, a woman baking bread, a fishing net. Help your church witness to the surprising yet common ways you encounter us in daily life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. When your word is opened, it gives light and understanding. Increase our understanding and awe of your creation. Guide the work of scientists and researchers, treasuring the earth May we live as grateful and healing caretakers of our home. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As the birds of the air nest in branches of trees, gather the nations of the world into the welcoming shade of your merciful reign. Direct leaders of nations to build trust with each other and walk in the way of peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your Spirit helps us in our weakness and intercedes for the saints according to your will. Help us when we do not know how to pray. Give comfort to the dying, refuge to the weary, justice to those who are oppressed, and healing to the sick especially those we now name aloud or in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You show steadfast love and direct us to ask of you what we need. Help our congregations of the Tri-Church Ministry to ask boldly for what is most needed. Refresh us with new dreams of being your people in this place and time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In you, our lives are never lost. Strengthen us by the inspiring witness of your people in all times and places. Embolden our witness now and one day gather us with all your saints in light. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always and also with you. The Lord is with you 
and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, gave it to the disciples saying, take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Gathered together as one in Christ, we pray as Jesus taught us, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. And the bread and wine, or crackers and juice, the elements that you have prepared in your home, it too is the body and blood of Jesus Christ. The body of Christ given in love for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. O oh God, giver of all good things, thank you for this heavenly food. Fuel us with your love and grace to share the light of your love with all we meet. Amen. May God, who is able to do far more abundantly than all we can ask or imagine, fuel you to live in God's love serving others and working for justice and peace. Almighty God, creator, redeemer, and sustainer, bless you this day and always. Amen. Go in peace. You are loved by God. Love yourself. Love others. With God's help, we will.